Well, these are bagpipes. And believe it or not, you can play music on this. They belong to my friend Rodney, down at the Great Ocean Tug and Salvage Company. <laughs> Rodney wants to start a Big Harbor bagpipe band, so I said I would learn to play the bagpipes so that I could play along with them, too. Oh, boy, these bagpipes sure are tough to play, though. Oh, these things could be dangerous. I don't know. Maybe I'm not ready to be a bagpipe player. I wonder what Theodore would do. You see, there was a time when, well, Theodore did something that, well, maybe wasn't something for a tugboat to do. One day, Theodore and Emily were bringing Clementine, the container ship, into her dock at the container terminal. Theodore just loved visiting the container terminal. Well, there was always so much going on with ships from every ocean in the world, coming and going, unloading their cargo. But the very best thing about the container terminal was the crane. As soon as Theodore had helped Emily dock Clementine, he cruised around to watch the giant harbor crane work. The crane rumbled his special container lifter out over the ship, then lowered it down to grab the first container off the ship. He rumbled and roared and made all kinds of powerful noises. Now he started to lift the container higher, higher, and higher, until it looked to Theodore as high as a building. Theodore had never really met the crane before, but he had always wanted to. He floated as close as he could so the crane could see him. Hello up there, he called. I'm Theodore Tugboat, and I move ships. Hello down there, the crane called back. I'm Clayton the Harbor Crane and I lift the containers off the ships you move. Theodore smiled. Clayton was kind of funny. Clayton began to rumble back down his track, carrying the container way up in the sky. Theodore was worried that Clayton might drop it. But Clayton came to a smooth stop and lowered the container slowly and carefully, just as gentle as a tugboat moving a ship into her dock. That looks terrific, said Theodore. I'd like to lift containers, too. A little while later, Theodore came rushing up to Emily, who was at the fuel dock getting her oil. Emily, Emily, guess what, shouted Theodore. I met the harbor crane. His name is Clayton, and he lifts great big containers all by himself, as high as a building. I know, said Emily. I like to watch him, too. Well, I'm going to lift big things, declared Theodore. Theodore began to lower his special hauling rope with a tow hook on the end into the water, like he was a giant harbor crane about to lift a container. Suddenly, he felt a, a thunk on the end of his hook. I got something, he shouted. Watch me lift it up, Emily. Theodore began to raise his hauling rope to lift what he had caught. It's, it's heavy, he gasped. It may be an old container that fell in the water, or it could be a whole ship. Emily floated around to see what Theodore had found. And then she started to laugh. What, what's so funny, grunted Theodore. You got a dock bumper, giggled Emily. It was true. Theodore had hooked a bumper. Emily set off for home, still smiling. I bet I'd be really good at lifting things, Theodore said to himself. I bet I could lift something really big.
The following morning, a thick fog hung over the whole harbor. But work must go on, fog or shine. Clementine, the container ship, was ready to leave the harbor now, with a new load of containers to take across the ocean. Theodore and Emily gave two sharp blasts of their whistles and set off with the ship. Soon, they had reached the edge of the ocean. They were careful to steer around bell buoys and the underwater rocks they guarded. Come around, Theodore, ordered Emily. Keep your tow rope tight. Theodore tightened his tow rope and helped steer the container ship safely around the bell buoy. By now, the fog was so thick, Theodore could barely see past his own bumpers. What was that? There was something in the water. Theodore strained to see what it could be. It was a dark shape, like the tip of a rock. Rock! shouted Theodore, blasting his biggest whistle. Turn! he shouted to Emily. Turn! Theodore shoved the back of the ship away from the rock as hard as he could, while up front, Emily did the same thing. With a terrible, wrenching sound, the containers on board the ship shifted from one side to the other. One fell overboard. Container overboard! cried Clementine. It floated near the surface for a moment, then sank beneath the bubbles. As soon as the tugs brought the ship safely to a stop, they went to look at the rock. That's not a rock, said Emily, floating closer. That's a bumper. That's when Theodore realized it was the dock bumper, the one he had tried to lift with his hauling rope. I thought I'd put it back on the dock safely, he said in a small voice. It must have fallen off. Now we have an even bigger problem, Emily frowned. The container has disappeared under the water. Well, we have to get it back, called Clementine. I can't leave without it. The tugs knew that by now that container had sunk all the way to the bottom of the harbor. We need help, Emily decided, to lift it back up. Theodore, you stay here with the ship. Emily hurried off to get help. Theodore slowly turned back to the spot where the container had sunk. I can lift it up, he said suddenly, just like a harbor crane. And right then and there, he began to lower his hauling rope. First, he had to catch the container with the tow hook on the end of his rope. That container's got to be down there somewhere, he said, shifting around. Suddenly, he felt something on the end of his hook. Got it, he shouted. Do you really think you can lift that container up? Asked Clementine, who was beginning to get nervous. It's very heavy. Maybe we better wait for help. Oh, I can do it, replied Theodore. Clayton, the harbor crane, does it all the time. Theodore started to raise his hauling rope back up to lift the container. At first, nothing happened. Theodore rumbled and roared and made all kinds of powerful noises as he tried to raise the heavy container. It's moving, he grunted. I'm lifting it. Sure enough, the heavy container was beginning to lift off the mud on the bottom. Almost there, Theodore gasped. Just a little more. Am I going to get my container back? Shouted Clementine. Smoke was beginning to pour from Theodore's stack as he struggled to lift the heavy container, and he could feel his engine getting hotter and hotter. Suddenly, there was a sickening thud deep in his hull. Theodore had to let go his hauling rope and watched helplessly as it spilled back into the water. And the container went with it all the way to the bottom. Emily arrived back pulling Shelburne the sea barge. Right away, by the look on Theodore's face, she knew something was the matter. I think, said Theodore, I hurt my engine. Emily left Shelburne to raise the container 
and floated with Theodore to the repair dock. What happened, Theodore? asked Emily. I was trying to lift the container like Clayton, Theodore said in a quiet voice. But containers are really heavy, said Emily. Well, Clayton lifts them all the time. Emily really didn't know what to say. Now, Clayton had heard everything Theodore was saying. You know, he called, sometimes I'd like to jump into the water just like a tugboat. And then the most surprising thing happened. Clayton began to roll faster and faster towards the end of his dock, straight towards the water. To Theodore, it looked like Clayton really did think he could jump in the water and float like a tugboat. Stop! Stop! cried Theodore. You can't be a tugboat! Why not? called Clayton. Because, because we're, we're different. Different? repeated Clayton, rumbling to a stop. I'm good at pulling ships, Theodore explained. Yes, you are. Very good, agreed Clayton. And, and you're good at, at lifting containers, Theodore went on. Well, said Clayton, yes, yes I am. Maybe I better stick to lifting containers. And maybe, said Theodore, feeling a sore engine, maybe I better stick to pulling ships. Now that's a good idea, said Clayton with a big grin in his voice. Clayton, you weren't really going to try and float like a tugboat, were you? said Theodore. Well, oh, no, not really, chuckled Clayton. But I sure fooled you, didn't I? <laughs> you sure did, grinned Theodore. I knew you were just kidding, smiled Emily. Just then, Northumberland's submarine bobbed up from below the water, back from a long night out under the ocean. Boy, wouldn't it be great to float under the water like a submarine, said Theodore. Terrific, said Clayton right away. Theodore? Well, fortunately for Emily, Clayton and Theodore began to laugh. Boy, Emily, we really fooled you, they shouted. You sure did, smiled Emily. Being a tugboat is the best, grinned Theodore. Even though Theodore can't be a crane and Clayton can't be a tugboat, they're both really great at what they are. <laughs> you know something else? I really don't think I'm a bagpipe player. But I think, I think Rodney will understand. I'll just tell him the story about Theodore and the harbor crane. Thanks for visiting us here in the Big Harbor. We'll see you all again next time. Maybe Rodney's band could use a good tuba player. Theodore, he's a tugboat and a friendly tugboat too. A friendly tugboat too. Oh, Theodore, likes to do the things that friendly tugboats do. Pushing and a pulling in the great big harbor In the great big world is so much fun So many brand new things to discover Waking with the sun, gotta get the job done Oh, Theodore and Emily Vodak, Hank and George and the harbor master too